Hello and welcome to A View For You, a twice monthly journal about people and events of interest in the Bay Area. My name is Peter Camarda. I'll be your host for tonight. Uh, we're broadcasting to you live on the San Francisco Public Access Channel, uh, Comcast Channel 76, Astound Channel 30, and AT&T Channel 99. Tonight, my guest is local artist John Wessel, uh, who is uh, joining us to talk a little bit about his artwork. Good Thank evening. you very much, John, for coming. Thanks um, for inviting me. And uh, we have a whole bunch of stuff to show you, so we'll get right into it. Um, uh, you uh, call yourself, I guess, um, sort of a hybrid? You're, there's both um, traditional and non-traditional elements in your painting? Well, um, yeah, that, I'd say that's correct. I, I, my inspiration comes from um, a, a abstract expressionism. Um, painters like de Kooning, um, Franz Klein, um, some of the, they, and they painted in the uh, 30s and 40s, I believe, 50s, mm -hmm. Jackson Pollock. Um, and uh, I mix that with, I'm um, inspired by graffiti art, by graffiti abatement, by posters, um, city art. I mean, I would say basically I'm an um, urban artist. Okay. And when you say urban abatement, you mean where the graffiti has been painted out? Painted over. Okay. There's a lot of interesting things about uh, how graffiti is painted over, what colors one chooses, the shapes one makes. Uh, I sort of look at that and with an artistic eye. And you use uh, graphite and uh, acrylics and found paper, is that right? That's correct. Um, I go along the city, collect uh, billboards that are fallen off or <laughs> thrown in the trash, old posters. Um, there's a lot of places that I've found which just, you know, uh, toss out their old, po their old paper. And I will collect that, put it in my studio, and... Um, use it in my artwork. So then the non-traditional part of your work is the dumpster diving that gets you the paper? <laughs> yeah, part of it is dumpster diving. I, yeah, and I won't disclose my sources. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a trade secret. It is a, a trade, trade secret. secret. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's take a look at some of the um, people that you consider uh, sort of inspirational or the uh, okay. foundation of your interests. Uh, here's one. Why don't you tell us about this one? Uh, this is a French artist. Uh, his name is Jacques Fugre. Um He's about 81 right now. And actually, I discovered his work um, a couple of years into my own work. Um, he shows here at um, a local gallery called Modernism. Um, wonderful artist. He uses basically the same thing that I use, uh, same material, uh, billboards, found paper, and he rips and tears it um, on, actually I think he's, his is on canvas. Okay, and then let's take a look at another one here. Uh, that's uh, de Kooning, uh -huh. um, and I'm not sure what the title of it, of it is, but it's sort of the abstract uh, expressionist, American abstract expressionism, I um, think although he was a Dutch Dutch born. That's the pa Pink Angels one, I think. Ange Rose, probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this one is not so much uh, found paper, but uh, just sort of an abstract, de abstract design? Abstract design, um, action painting, a lot of gestural, uh, gestural marks in it. You can see um, a lot of movement, a lot and, of power. And so your painting will emulate some of that drawing over the, the picture or the, the lines that... Yeah, I think in the same spirit as de Kooning that, uh, you know, the, the form and the line how they connect and how they uh, okay. pose and each other. This now is a picture of? Uh, that's uh, Glenn Close. Um, Glenn Close, I'm sorry, Chuck Close. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, she me. lost a lot of hair. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I put that in there more for uh, his process. I think I'm really interested in the process of my work. Um, he's somebody, although he does his face and does portraiture, he's really um, fascinated by the process, uh, process of his work. Mm -hmm. So, um, And then this, this one? This is, uh, I believe, Cy Twombly. Okay. Uh, very calligraphic, um, mark-making, um, graffiti scribbling. Uh, so, I, again, it's that sort of gestural uh, language that I like in, in uh, his work. Okay. And here comes another one. This has a little more color in it. This is... Um, is that de Kooning as well? I believe that's de Kooning as well. Okay. Yeah. So, in terms of influence, what would you say that these paintings really have... Uh, that's Franz Klein. That's Franz Klein? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Again, abstract expressionism. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, what was the question? How do these contribute to your work? What What are the elements that you're taking from them? You know, them? I think I've, I've viewed a lot of this 
these works as a, at an early age with my parents in museums, either that or in art books. I think what I really um, was inspired by was the dynamicism, uh, the dynamics in the work, um, the power, uh, the, the freedom the, in the free spirit of it. Okay, and then this one is, is that an actual Oh, that's for Gray again, I oh, believe, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's torn paper. All right, so then let's take a look at this one, which is actually not a painting, but... Um, that's just, when I, I carry a camera and go around the city and, and take pictures of uh, billboards, take pictures of walls, um, a lot of construction area, and it, you know, you go around the city and you'll see, a, uh, especially on plywood, construction walls people will mark and then people will plaster over with posters. Um, there's something I really like about the sort of randomness of it. Um, the green and against the lines, I mean, there's something very abstract and for me very um, unintentional but wonderful about it. I'm almost passionate about the, the way all the colors are mm -hmm. arranged there and the sort of movement of the form. And there is some order there among the chaos, which is sort of interesting, and some cal uh, calligraphy, so um, I like that that um, parallel. And so you were saying that the, the series that we're about to look at is called Ozymandias. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what that represents, that name? Yeah, I was inspired by a poem by Shelley written in about 1818, I believe. Um, it's, among other things, it's about um, a king who builds some monuments to himself, uh, huge monuments, and on the, on the monuments are a plaque that says, My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings, look on my work, ye mighty, in despair. And now, as one looks at his, as, as these monuments, they're they are crumbling in the sand, and the only thing you can see around them is just d desolate sand. Um, so in terms of your interpretation of the urban environment, you're looking sort of at the effects of time and decay, or the, the sort of residue that remains after? I think it's more the mess time and notoriety, I think. Um, you know, you'll see a, a, a poster for somebody who's current and, you know, the hottest, latest thing. Um, and, you know, it's, it's interesting to think that um, maybe a couple weeks after the concert, or certainly ten years after the concert, this person is no longer, um, ha has the same power, has the same punch. We, so the, the famous becomes not famous in, in, in a matter of time. In a very short period of time. Yeah. You, you said to me, I think when I spoke to you at the studio, everyone becomes pieces of paper. <laughs> the hot shots of today will become scrap paper. <laughs> The famous and the not famous will meet at some point. Those are prophetic words, John. I, I, I believe that. I believe that. You know, take 10,000 years from now. Or, you know, um, who's going to remember Madonna? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not I. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at another um, photograph now. So this, again, looks like a piece of artwork, but it's actually a billboard, right? It's actually a billboard um, on, I believe, Cesar Chavez. And I was driving down to work, and I saw this wonderful, it's sort of reminiscent of Jacques Ville Gray's work, mm -hmm. you know? Um, that's a different, that, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Um, so I, I just thought the colors were wonderful. I thought that this, the sort of, you knew it was going to become something else. Mm -hmm. You knew they were going to cover it up. I, I just like that snapshot in time. All right, and then this next one, um, tell us about that. Um, that's part of what I consider graffiti abatement. Um, there's a wall around where I work where people are constantly tagging it, and they're constantly covering it up. Now, what I find fascinating is that sometimes um, the abatement will have a certain um, abstract quality to it, a, a certain randomness, and, and they're actually beautiful paintings in some cases that uh, are unintentional, and I find that sort of interesting and also exciting for some reason. Yeah, they're almost sort of spontaneous um, paintings, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, the way they're, yeah. that they're arranged. So d is that something that interests you, the distinction between artifice and, and uh, nature and the way in your kind of painting that the two sort of reflect each other or emerge? 